Anti-gout medications, as their name implies, are medications used to treat gout, which is a form of inflammatory arthritis. The underlying cause of gout is hyperuricemia, which is too much uric acid in the blood, resulting in the formation of monosodium urate crystals. These sharp, needle-like crystals deposit in areas of slow blood flow, such as joint spaces or kidney filtration tubules. Anti-gout medications work by preventing the buildup of uric acid, or by reducing inflammation. Now, uric acid is a natural waste product of purines, which are one of the building blocks of DNA and RNA. During their metabolism, purines are first degraded to hypoxanthine, which is then oxidized twice by xanthine oxidase, first to become xanthine, and then finally to uric acid. Uric acid circulates in the bloodstream until it reaches the kidneys, where it's secreted into the proximal tubules, and eventually excreted in the urine. Now, hyperuricemia occurs when levels of circulating uric acid exceed normal levels, which is around 1.5 to 6 milligrams per deciliter for women and 2.5 to 8 milligrams per deciliter for men. Urate crystal deposition occurs when concentrations of circulating uric acid exceeds its rate of solubility, which is about 6.8 milligrams per deciliter. Now, anti-gout medications are subdivided into two main groups. Chronic gout medications, which are used to prevent the buildup of uric acid in the blood, and acute gout medications, which are used to reduce inflammation. Chronic gout medications include xanthine oxidase inhibitors, such as allopurinol and febuxostat, uricosuric medications, such as probenicid and sulfonpyrazone, and recombinant urate oxidases, such as rasburicase and plagoticase. On the other hand, acute gout medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs, glucocorticoids, and colchicine. Alright, let's start with xanthine oxidase inhibitors. Allopurinol is a purine analog that works by competitive inhibition of xanthine oxidase. But, besides being an inhibitor, allopurinol is also a substrate meaning that it's converted by xanthine oxidase into its active metabolite called oxypurinol. Moreover, oxypurinol, which is also known as alloxanthine, is a non-competitive inhibitor of xanthine oxidase. This way, allopurinol and oxypurinol decrease levels of uric acid by increasing levels of hypoxanthine and xanthine, which are more soluble compounds and therefore easier to excrete. As a result, there's a smaller chance of crystals depositing in joints and tissues. Other indications for allopurinol include individuals with lymphoma or leukemia who are receiving anti-cancer therapy. These individuals are expected to experience tumor lysis, resulting in significant production of uric acid from purines that are released by the death of neoplastic cells. Common side effects of allopurinol include gastrointestinal problems and rash. On the other hand, febuxostat is a non-purine inhibitor of xanthine oxidase, and it's reserved for individuals who can't tolerate allopurinol. Common side effects of febuxostat include gastrointestinal disturbance, headache, and liver problems. It's important to note that xanthine oxidase inhibitors can cause bone marrow suppression in individuals treated with immunosuppressive medications, such as azathioprine and 6-mercaptopurine. These medications are normally metabolized by xanthine oxidase. Therefore, inhibition of their metabolism will increase their effect, which are known to decrease replication and induce apoptosis of white blood cells. In order to prevent this, the dose of the immunosuppressive medication should be reduced when there's concurrent use of allopurinol. Let's switch gears and shift our focus onto uricosuric medications like probenicid and sulfonpyrazone, which work by inhibiting renal tubular reabsorption of uric acid, thereby increasing its excretion. But because they're weak acids, in low doses, these medications may compete with uric acid for secretion in the proximal tubules, thereby elevating, rather than reducing concentration of uric acid in the blood. 
Likewise, uric acuric medications can compete with other weak acids that are normally secreted in the proximal tubules, such as penicillin, cephalosporins, and aspirin. So, combinations of these drugs should be avoided. Let's move on to recombinant urate oxidases, which include paglotocase and resburicase. These medications are actually enzymes that oxidize uric acid to elantoin, which is a more soluble product, therefore easier to excrete. For medicine-specific indications, paglotocase is used to treat chronic refractory gout, while resburicase is used to treat tumor lysis syndrome in lymphoma and leukemia patients who are receiving anti-cancer therapy. Common side effects include anaphylaxis, methemoglobinemia, and hemolysis in individuals with glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, or G6PD, deficiency. Okay, let's move on to the treatment of acute gout. The first-line treatment is a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, such as indomethacin or ibuprofen. These medications work by reversible inhibition of cyclooxygenase, which is an enzyme responsible for the production of prostaglandins that cause inflammation. It's important to note that aspirin and other salicylates should be avoided in gout because they're weak acids. Therefore, they can compete with uric acid for secretion in the proximal tubules. On the other hand, glucocorticoids such as methylprednisolone and prednisone work by inhibiting phospholipase A2, which is another enzyme responsible for the production of prostaglandins. Moreover, these medications can be administered orally, parenterally, or by intraarticular administration. The last medication in this group is colchicine, which works by binding tubulin and inhibiting microtubule polymerization, thereby inhibiting neutrophil migration in joints and reducing inflammation. Other indications for colchicine include prophylaxis of gout attacks and familial Mediterranean fever, which is a condition characterized by fever, arthritis, hepatitis, peritonitis, and pleuritis. Colchicine is contraindicated in individuals with kidney, liver, or gastrointestinal problems. Moreover, it should be used only when NSAIDs or corticosteroids are contraindicated or ineffective because colchicine has a high rate of side effects, including nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, peripheral neuropathy, rhabdomyolysis, kidney damage, and bone marrow suppression. Now, we want to make a simple and fun mnemonic that'll help you efficiently memorize and retain all of these farm facts. Let's use a scene in a restaurant. We can put the chronic gout medications in the kitchen and the acute gout medications in the dining area. In the kitchen, we can start with the xanthine oxidase inhibitors. First, we have the chefs, an ox and an owl, pouring oil into a pan, representing oxypurinol and allopurinol. Behind them is their boss, who's a fabulous fox for febuxostat. There's a chopped up tumor in the pan, since these drugs are used to treat tumor lysis syndrome, which could increase uric acid levels. For side effects, they're both wearing dirty chef's hats to help you remember eating their food can cause gastrointestinal distress. These hats also have red dots all over them to represent a rash. Next to the pan, there's a pile of discarded bones and dead white blood cells because these drugs cause bone marrow suppression when used with immunosuppressants. Okay, let's move on to the sink for uric acuric medications that decrease tubular reabsorption of uric acid. Here, we have a butterfly trying to drink from the sink with its long proboscis for probenicid. Next, the edge of the sink is on fire, creating a pyrozone for sulfonpyrazone. In the sink, there's a discarded pen and a spring, representing penicillin and aspirin, which clog up the drain, so they shouldn't be used with uric acuric drugs. Finally, just like with all restaurants, the back door to the kitchen is where we keep the recombinant urate oxidase medications. So, let's have the restaurant owners be a pig and a raccoon carrying briefcases. These two represent piglotocase and rasburicase. For specific indications, the pig is carrying a urate crystal for gout, while the raccoon is carrying a plate of chopped up tumor for tumor lysis syndrome. 
Both have swollen faces for anaphylaxis. For contraindications, let's put the flags of the six countries that lead the EU, called the G6, above the doorway to help you remember these medications are contraindicated for people with G6PD. Now, these people can get methemoglobinemia when using these medications, which results in chocolate-colored blood. So, let's make the door a giant bar of chocolate. So, at the first table, we have the first-line acute gout medications, which are NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, represented by an Egyptian ibis, and indomethacin, which is a lump of unbaked dough. A spring for aspirin has been discarded under the table to help you remember this particular NSAID is contraindicated. At the next table, we have the glucocorticoids. So, here, let's put someone's son dressed up as a predatory shark for prednisone. Both glucocorticoids and NSAIDs have anti-inflammatory effects. So, let's have a restaurant staff put out their flaming creme brulees with a fire extinguisher. Okay, moving on to the last table, which has a plate of cold, uncooked chicken for colchicine. This table is last since it's only used when the person doesn't respond to NSAIDs or glucocorticoids. The chicken is pre-cooked to help you remember it could also be used to prevent gout. There's a pita bread that's on fire next to the chicken to help you remember that another indication is Mediterranean fever. For side effects, the person who ate this chicken is vomiting to represent GI distress. His hands got burned by the flaming pita, so they're wrapped in bandages for peripheral neuropathy, and the muscles in his arms are red and swollen for rhabdomyolysis. There's a pile of chicken bones next to him for bone marrow suppression, and in the pile is a dead kidney for renal toxicity. All right, as a quick recap. Anti-gout medications are used to treat gout, which is a form of inflammatory arthritis caused by urate acid crystal buildup in joints. They're subdivided into two main groups, chronic gout medications, which prevent the buildup of uric acid in the blood, and acute gout medications, which reduce inflammation. Chronic gout medications include xanthine oxidase inhibitors like allopurinol and febuxostat, uric assuric medications like probenicid and sulfonpyrazone, and recombinant urate oxidases like resburicase and pegloticase. On the other hand, acute gout medications include non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, glucocorticoids, and colchicine. But wait, there's more. Here is a mind map with all of the mnemonics. Go ahead and pause the video so you can test yourself and see what you remember. Stay tuned for the answers after the credits. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.